All right, you guys, we are recording and we are getting started. Welcome to the first of our webinar series with SDAR. Today, we're gonna to be talking about social media success with Instagram stories. So excited you guys are here today. I really appreciate you taking out the time out of your day to join in. I know right now is a busy and crazy time for everyone, whether you're managing your business still, whether you have to fight some things that are happening because of what's going on in the world, or whether you just have to have kids at home because a lot of the schools are closed. There's so much stuff going on, so I'm very grateful that you decided to take time out of your day to join in this webinar to learn a little bit of information about how you can still continue growing your business with social media in a time that's very challenging for many. So again, first of all, welcome. Let's go ahead and utilize the chat box. Type in the chat box. I wanna start off with something positive. What are you grateful for today? Uh, for me, I'm grateful that I was able to log on and do this webinar. I originally was gonna be speaking at a live event for SDAR, which was canceled, so I'm grateful for technology. Um, I'm gonna read some comments as they come up. Laura says, my health. Tanya says, coffee. Um, Devery says, grateful for health of family. Uh, Ma says health. So a lot of people right now are grateful for their health, which is definitely a good time for that. I hope you guys are all staying safe. Um, and uh, Kelly is grateful for this time to educate herself. We have another one from Clinton who says health. So Cal Bob um, woke up healthy this morning. Uh, Dorothy, grateful for you. Thank you so much. Grateful for you as well. And John Austin says he's grateful for everything. All right, next question. I want you guys to type in the chat box. What is your Instagram handle? I know a lot of us are on Instagram already. We're using it, maybe not consistently, or maybe we are using it cons consistently, but type in your Instagram handle. And again, I want this to be an interactive session where you can also network and connect with other people because I do know that a lot of us miss being out there, networking, connecting with people, that social interaction. So utilize the time in the webinar to also network and connect with people, follow each other that you see, uh, on the chat box and we can all really be able to be there and support each other. So people are typing in their Instagrams. You might have to scroll back on the chat later. I will be doing that as well to share their Instagram handles. And if you don't have one yet, this is the day to sign up for one. So thank you guys for all sharing your Instagram handles. Looks like we have a lot of people that are already online, already using Instagram. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I try to save the chat so I can go back and scroll through everything because I missed it because I can't see everything. But right now, as you guys are tuning in, make sure you network and connect with each other. You can send messages to individual people, you can send messages to everyone, and you can really take this time to connect with others. Uh, we have Linda who's using her husband's Zoom account. All right, so in case you guys don't have my information, which most of you do, it's right there. Feel free to take a screenshot or you probably have received an email from me. Uh, my Instagram handle and my Facebook is at Marketing Melody. If you haven't already done so, make sure you pull out your phone, make sure you follow me on Instagram and also like my Facebook page. I'll be doing a lot of things where I'm sharing about the webinar, I'm sharing additional tips, and I'm sharing upcoming webinars on my Instagram and Facebook, so make sure you are connected and make sure that you're following me. If you take the time to post any Instagram stories and Facebook things where you tag me today, I will make sure that I share what you tagged and I'll share it to my feed so you get some visibility that way as well. So feel free to take screenshots, feel free to take video clips of what we're doing today, share it on Instagram and Facebook, tag me at Marketing Melody, or you can also use the hashtag Marketing Melody, and I'll make sure I get you some publicity and share that out as well. So feel free to do that. And let's check to see if we're in the right place. Um, we're gonna make sure everyone here uh, wants to be here and has a need to be here. So type in the chat box if any of these numbers apply to you, or maybe they all apply to you. So type the number one if you've never posted an Instagram stories before. Type the number one, and there's no shame in that. I was a little bit late using Instagram stories. I didn't do it right away. So if you have never posted an Instagram stories, type the number one. So I see a few people. So perfect. This is the perfect place for you to be if you have never used Instagram stories. Um, I've posted but not on stories, as someone said. Okay, let's check on number two. The second thing is, type the number two if you have posted on Instagram stories, but you don't understand all the features. So maybe you're using Instagram stories, but you really wanna be able to take advantage of it even more. 
so you understand the power of it and how to really be a resource. So our topic today is really going to focus on teaching you how to be a resource to your community, to your clients, to your friends, so people think of you and you're top of mind when they need your service. In this case, most of it, most of us here work in real estate, some people don't, but your goal with social media is not necessarily to have people call you right away and say that they wanna buy it or sell their house today, but it's to have them think of you so they refer you and so that you're top of mind when it is time to buy or sell. All right, this third one, type in number three if you have ever logged into Instagram with the intention of being productive and doing business, but then you find yourself looking at random people's pages and animal photos and you're kind of scrolling through the feeds without actually doing any business or you kind of get distracted because there's so many cool things to look at. So I see a lot of you. This is uh, myself as well, so I would type in three here as well. So Instagram is a great place to go for entertainment. It's a great place to go to get distracted. But when you are using it for business, you want to be intentional with that time. And you want to have dedicated time where you know that you're on there to interact and to connect and to create content that's specific to helping you grow your business. This happens a lot when people don't have a strategy or don't have a plan of what they're going to be doing on Instagram. If you've been to any of my workshops or webinars, you know that my goal is to really have you leave with one or two things that you can execute right now. You don't have to do everything. I just want you to choose one or two things that you feel like you can start executing and that you feel you can start integrating into your social media strategy for your business. I like the word now because for me, it's an acronym for no opportunity wasted. So if you guys wanna keep that in mind, the goal is to have one or two things that you can do right now. You don't have to do 20 different things. If you are gonna be doing something that you learned today to ensure it's successful and to ensure that you're able to really benefit from it, you have to do it consistently. It's more important for me that you only post once a week rather than three times a week and then you don't post for two weeks and maybe you post once and then maybe you post another three weeks later. If you consistently show up with whatever schedule works for you, whether it's once a week or whether it's twice a week, you will start seeing some results and you'll start noticing. People will say to you, oh, I saw your video. I saw you do this. I saw you do that. And it'll start being more evident that you're actively participating and you're actively being a resource. So consistency really is key when you're showing up for your business with social media. And here's a little bit more specifics on what I mean by consistency. You can post randomly and sporadically, which I'm sure a lot of people do. If you're posting randomly and sporadically, now that means that Maybe you're out somewhere and you're doing something fun and you post a photo and then you're eating somewhere cool and you post a photo and then maybe you have something for your business and you post a photo. That's something that's kind of sporadic. You can do that, but on top of those sporadic posts, it's really important that you have a consistent strategy that is you posting and interacting at least once a week related to your business. So maybe you can say every single Monday I'm posting a motivational quote for my business or every single Friday I'm featuring a hot property for my business. So every single Monday you have something motivational and every single Friday you have something that's a hot property and you do that consistently every single week. So you show up for your business that way. Now in between that week, on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you can post anything else that you're doing on top of that consistency. That way, if you don't end up posting things throughout the week, or if you don't end up posting things that are random, you still have those consistent posts that you do. This is the same thing with stories. If you are wanting to use stories as a business strategy to grow your business, you have to choose something consistent that you do at least once a week. Now this, these aren't happening now, but maybe you do a caravan uh, once a week, then commit to that week. Maybe every single week on Wednesday, you go to a caravan. So you know on Wednesdays, you'll be doing Instagram stories on that caravan. So at least you're showing up with your business. 
or maybe you like to give a open house and you're someone who does a lot of open houses every single weekend. So you know, okay, every single Saturday is your open house day. You'll be posting something related to an open house. Even if you don't have one, you'll be sharing another colleague's open house. You'll be sharing another person's open house. And you just know that every single weekend, you're going to be doing an open house post on Instagram stories. So again, at least if you don't post anything else that week, you show up for your business consistently that once a week. Do you guys think that you can all do a once a week commitment, a once a week commitment to posting about your real estate business? Does that sound doable? So, so yes, yes, yes. Now, a lot of people, when I work with them, I will have a lot of clients I work with one-on-one. -on -one. When they first start, uh, they say, no, I want to post five days a week. They go from zero to wanting to do five days. And that is just too overwhelming. So I say, if you don't have any consistent strategy, just start with one day a week. If you feel like that's going well and you can add on more, then add on two days a week. Eventually, this becomes second nature. You can post every single day on stories. But for now, just commit to posting stories one day a week and have it the same day of the week and have some type of consistent content that you do that week. All right, guys. So I'm going to be talking today about ephemeral content. Who knows what the word ephemeral means? Type in the chat box if you know what the word ephemeral means. I don't see anyone typing here. Um, Dreamy says Laura. John says not permanent. And uh, Philip says changing. So those are all um, correct. It is content that is not permanent, like bubbles. It lasts for a short amount of time, like footprints. It can be very dreamy, as Laura said, because if you are thinking about this content, you kind of think of it as kind of like this kind of blurry content that kind of disappears, lasting for a short time. And someone said they cheated, so maybe they looked it up, but that's the power of Google. And that is the power of this. All right, you guys, somehow, some people, I'm looking on my phone, some people are still signing up for the webinar today, and that's okay, they're gonna miss it because they have to sign up beforehand. So ephemeral content is short, it's fleeting, it doesn't last forever, and that's what we're referring to when we say Instagram stories. Instagram stories and even Facebook stories is content that's called ephemeral content. This is one of the hottest types of content for 2020, and I'm gonna share with you why this content is so popular and why it's gonna be really valuable if you can incorporate it into your business, even if it's just once a week. So here's why it's so popular. Number one reason why it's so popular is because we all have FOMO, fear of missing out. FOMO has never been more prevalent than in a social media day and age. Because you, how many have you have gone on Facebook and you see people vacationing in Hawaii, in tropical places on the beach, and you're just thinking, wow, I'm at my, at my desk stuck at home. Why are these people vacationing? Now, not now. Um, you know, right now people aren't vacationing. But before everything that's been happening in the, in the world now, how many of you have ever had FOMO by seeing people's vacation photos where you just wish you could be there or... Um, you know, you, you wonder why you're sitting at your desk when they're on vacation. Does that ever happen to anyone? So people are saying all the time, for sure. All the time, says Nadine. Um, with ephemeral content, this is content that people know is going to disappear. So if they don't see it right away, within 24 hours, they will miss it and they won't get to see it. Now, there are ways to keep this content with highlights. We won't go into that today. That'll be another webinar. But for the most part, when someone posts on Instagram stories, people flock to that post first before their static post because they know that they will not get to see that post and that they will miss out if they don't click on it right away. So that's one reason why ephemeral content is so popular. Number two is that you have an opportunity to give people a glimpse of the behind the scenes on what you're doing. Ephemeral content doesn't need to be content that's fully, completely thought out and curated and takes you know, an hour to plan. It's content that you post on the fly. It's content that you post when you're seeing something cool and in the moment. 
That's why people love ephemeral content and stories because it shows behind the scenes. It is personalized. So this type of content is very personal. Again, it's not something that you took hours to plan. It's something that's happening to you right now. And with stories, it is okay to be posting a mix of personal and business things that are happening. You can kind of fuse the two, let people know what you're doing. If you're homeschooling your kids right now, if you are you know, having to work from home and it's something that's brand new to you, if you're having to do virtual showings and you can't do live events anymore, you know, let people know, take a screenshot or take a video of our webinar today and let people know that, hey, you're still learning, you're still furthering your education, even though you can't go into live workshops. And number four, Instagram actually features your content that is on stories. If you log into Instagram, if you're familiar with the platform, um, I'll be plugging in my phone in a little bit, you will see that at the very top, Instagram stories is the first thing that pops up and it's the first thing that people see right at the top. So if you have a new story, people will see that. So right now, if we're connected on Instagram, uh, make sure you post a story and I'll see that first and I'll be able to share that with you guys. So it's definitely something that Instagram wants to focus on and feature because they know that stories keep you engaged. They keep you interacting with people on Instagram and they love to see that. So these are the four reasons why it's so popular. Fear of missing out, you get the behind the scenes look, it's very personalized and it's also featured by Instagram. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in on tips and how you can actually use Instagram stories yourself for your real estate business. I'll be focusing a lot on what's happening now Feel free to type in any questions in the chat that you might have, and I'll be answering all those at the end, but we're gonna be focusing on the current pandemic that's happening and how you can really be a resource for people with Instagram stories. So we will be talking about the different features you can use. Some of the different features that you can use are location, mentions, hashtags, you can do polled questions, there's funny, um, do you guys say GIF with a G or GIF like the peanut butter? I always say GIF, but I hear a lot of people say GIF. So I'm just actually just curious about this. Type in the chat box. Do you say GIF like the peanut butter with a J or do you say GIF um, and sound out the G? So a lot of people, uh, a lot of controversy. There's someone, Coach K says GIF, um, Devery says GIF, and then Kelly's G, uh, GIF, Bob, G. So a lot of people actually more G. Um, John Austin says GIF since the late 80s. So... Um, Tanya says G, GIF, all right, so we have a lot of back and forth. I think it's one of those things like tomato, tomato, where you can kind of say both and they still, they still work. I say GIF personally, but who knows if that's, that's right or wrong. <clears throat> so right now, the main thing that you want to focus on with your real estate business is not flaunting all your listings or your sold but it is to be a resource for your community. How many of you can agree that right now it's never been more important for you to be a resource, to let people know that you're there for them, whether it's related to housing, whether it's related to community resources, or whether it's related to just being someone who can listen when people are going through a challenging time. Being a resource has never been more important than ever before. The way to be a resource, if you hear someone knocking on the door, my daughter's in the background knocking on the door, so I'm not gonna let her in right now, but if you hear knocking, that's what it is. Um, being a resource is the most important thing right now when people really need to know information. Now, even before everything happened with the pandemic, it was already important for real estate agents and people who work in real estate to be a resource because again, the goal is to stay top of mind. It's not to try to sell houses with every social media post. So you want people to think of you as a resource. One of the ways to be a resource is by helping people figure out location, location, location. We hear this all the time in real estate. It's a little bit different for how to be a resource for locations right now. Right now, people want to know locations they can go to purchase staples, groceries. They wanna know where they can find eggs and flour and milk. 
Um, I shared this earlier before the webinar started with people that were early. I went to Target, the last time I was there, the entire bread aisle and the entire pasta aisle, other than a couple boxes of chickpea pasta, were completely sold out. Has that happened to anyone lately? Where you go to the store, you need something, and it's completely sold out. I also went to the grocery store. Um, I haven't been for about a week, I'm trying to avoid it now, and eggs were completely sold out. What were some items that you guys needed that were sold out? Type it in the chat box. Any items that you guys needed that were sold out? I know for me, it was bread, pasta. Oh, Laura is saying eggs are still sold out, bread. I actually bought ingredients in an attempt to make my own bread. Um, hand soap, uh, dish soap, which is weird. Um, Kelly also says bread. So these are basic items that people need um, Deirdre says chicken. Um, tortillas, wow, uh, that's not good, especially in San Diego, people love Mexican food. How are they gonna get the Mexican food if tortillas are sold out? So Mike Francisco says jasmine rice. All right, guys, so here's something that you wanna keep in mind. People right now need to know the location to go to be able to purchase these items. So you wanna think locally, you wanna think of how you can help small businesses. A lot of small businesses right now, restaurants, are turning into grocery stores where you can order and pick up. Now, they are fully stocked on these pantry items. They're fully stocked on pasta, on eggs, on flour, because they get these items delivered to them all the time. So what you can do is post on Instagram stories, screenshots, or share where else you can go to purchase these staples in your pantry. Tag people. T tag the location and tag the businesses. This is a great way to get visibility for people who are looking for these staples. Another thing you can share for locations. Um, I know a lot of kids are out of school right now. They're at home. How many of you guys have kids that you're homeschooling now at home? Um, is anyone doing that? Oh, there's a Facebook group called In Stock and Needed Essentials for San Diego. So you guys definitely check the chat box. A lot of us are posting some great information and we're posting some great resources. So make sure you check the chat box. So Tanya just posted a Facebook group to see where you can post something that's in stock. So some people said that they're homeschooling, kindergarten and fifth grader. A lot of times people right now need resources and they need places to go to help their kids stay entertained. So even though you can't physically go places, a lot of things you can do are tag locations of stores and local businesses that are now offering online resources and educational resources for kids. So there is um, a library that's doing free story times. My daughter is a toddler and we go to story time every single week. A lot of libraries are offering story times. Tag libraries, tag local organizations that are offering these resources that your kids are missing that they can now do online. Third thing you can do with a location is that, uh, oh, someone says pre-med college student. Oh my goodness, Angela, I hope you know about a lot of pre-med things to be able to homeschool a pre-med college student. Um, that's something that I wouldn't know about, but it sounds like we all are doing our best to homeschool our kids. I'm doing my best to keep my busy toddler entertained. If any of you have toddlers or have ever had a toddler, you know how busy they are and how they want to constantly be running around and doing activities. So. Location, location, location. You can still tag locations. If you don't know how to do that, I will show you that once I share my phone. Tag locations and tag businesses that are offering things that can help your community. That's what you wanna focus on right now. At the same time, you do still wanna let people know that you're available for real estate. You can still be a resource for that as well. So, this is something, a funny story that I want to share. How many of you had one of these phones? I think I had this, literally this exact phone. Did anyone have this phone back in the day? This is not even the oldest one where you have to have that rotary dial. Um, I had this exact phone. I, li I literally think that this was the phone that I had. And I was looking at photos of this phone and they're selling on eBay right now. People are still buying these phones. They're about 30 to $50. If you want to buy one for fun or if you want to buy one to show your kid something ancient, you can go on eBay and buy these phones right now. So on this phone, I see a lot of people say they have this phone. On this phone, I want to share a funny story. I don't know where the story came from. It's something that I heard, it's kind of a meme online that I heard. There were two kids and the kids were in elementary school and the parents found this phone in their uh, basement. 
and they brought it out to show their kids the phone and they plugged it in. They were still able to get a dial tone and they were going to tell their kids about this phone that they used to use. And the kids pointed to something right here. Okay. They pointed to the pound sign and they asked their parents, mom and dad, why is there a hashtag on the phone? Right. They're like, they didn't understand that that's a pound sign and that existed before hashtags. So they're curious about why there was a pound sign or a hashtag on the phone. And the parents had to explain to them that back in their day, there were no hashtags. This is uh, what a phone looked like and that was a pound sign if you needed to dial in and be able to reach someone in a certain extension. So I thought that was kind of funny that I would share a little bit of hashtag humor. And this is another way you can be a resource is to use hashtags how many of you know what a hashtag is it's okay if you don't if you do maybe type in what you think a hashtag is and um, we can together learn the best ways to use a hashtag feel free to type in the chat box what a hashtag is to you at sign and hashtag explanation so how are they used so people are asking questions about these so hashtags are a way to track a specific conversation on Instagram they're used to find photos or used to find certain types of content where you're able to search for photos of hashtag San Diego hashtag San Diego real estate you click on the hashtag and you see all the photos and posts associated with that hashtag so it's a way to get your posts found for a certain topic on Instagram stories and Instagram in general. <clears throat> so to be a resource, you can hashtag things and people who are searching for those things can find them on Instagram or they can find them and find everything that's listed under the hashtag. You can also create your own hashtag. I know uh, Mortgage Mike was in here. I'm not sure if he's still in here. He typed in his own hashtag earlier, Mortgage Mike. If you click on the Mortgage Mike hashtag, you see all of the posts he created related to um, his mortgage company and related to prime lending that he works with. You can see all these mortgage chips and mortgage things that he posts. Um, if you go on the hashtag marketing melody, you might see all kinds of posts that I use, or you can see other people who are using the hashtag. All right, Mike is still here. Um, so Mike, go ahead and type in your hashtag again. If people want to check that out on Instagram where they can see that, because I know you're really good about using your own hashtag. And if you don't have your own hashtag, you can create one. You want to be mindful about creating one or because if you have one that someone already uses, you might get confused and you might have people, Carl has one too. Carl is my realtor. Yes, I've seen Carl use that a lot as well. So he's great at using that. Um, Carl is my realtor is his hashtag. Click on that and you see all of his real estate posts. I love it. Um, Deirdre uses team SD real estate for her hashtag. That's great. You can see things about her team when you use that hashtag. So before I go into sharing my phone, I want to talk about different features we'll use on Instagram stories. The mention feature is great. If you mention someone on Instagram stories, they can go in and they can share your posts. So right now, if you guys take a photo or a video or a clip of this webinar and you share it on Instagram stories, I encourage you to do so. I will be able to share that story to my Instagram <clears throat> later. Um, if you ask questions, people will be able to answer and interact with you. If you guys go ahead and create polls, people can also interact on the polls. There's many different ways to be interactive on your Instagram stories. Here are a few examples, and then I'll pull up real life examples when I plug in my phone next. Um, I know Deirdre's in this workshop. This was a Instagram story that Deirdre shared. Deirdre is a great friend of mine and we've been working together. Um, she's a wonderful client. We've been working together for a few years now. Um, I taught a bunch of social media workshops at her office down in uh, Keller Williams over in uh, El Cajon. And she also teaches classes there and she's a leader uh, related to their educational team. And here, Deirdre posted an Instagram story of someone who posted an Instagram story of her teaching who tagged her. So she reposted that and it's a great way to interact with people. Same thing if you guys are posting about me now, I will repost it later. Another example here, this was a workshop that I gave uh, last month at the Dove Library in Carlsbad. I was sharing some behind the scenes of me being up late creating a workshop. Similar to what we did today, we talked about ephemeral content. 
Um, I tagged Marissa, who um, was the sponsor of this workshop, and I checked into the Doug Library where the event was going to be located. And then this one, Mortgage Mike SD, he posted this, uh, I believe yesterday, and he is doing something that I recommended. It looks like he got some takeout or maybe he made his own food. Um, was this, I think, I think actually he made this by himself. He does a lot of cooking. Um, and he tagged a company here. Looks like it was a company of one of the foods. He also used the hashtag for the beer that he's drinking. So now he is really taking advantage of these features to feature other people and to give them some visibility. Um, so I see some people in the chat Deirdre says, so easy once I hired you to coach me. Thank you so much, Deirdre. I appreciate having you as a wonderful client and always praising what I do. Um, so again, if you guys are interested in how people are using Instagram stories, um, Mr. Mike Francisco is a great person to follow. Check him out. Let me go. Uh, so the question from David, when would you use an at and a hashtag? All right. I'm going to plug in my phone. I'll answer that question and many others. I'll be sharing some real live Instagram stories that are working now. Let's cross our fingers that this works and I can share my phone with you guys. So plugging in my phone, I hope it works because my computer where I plug in my USB, it somehow got dented. So I've been having issues plugging it in. All right, there we go. I think, I think it worked. Now let's go ahead and see if I can change what I'm sharing. Um, John's question <coughs> quickly was uh, the star symbol from the old phone. Is there anything related to that? The star symbol does not really do anything right now, um, not on Instagram, but there are some secret ways you can use it on Facebook um, that I will go over later, but it doesn't really do anything on Instagram right now that I know of. If you guys know anything that it does on Instagram, let me know. All right, so give me one second. I'm sharing my phone. Um, do you guys see my phone up now? Do you guys see my phone screen instead of the, the screen that was the PowerPoint? Let me know if you guys see my phone screen. So you guys see the phone screen? All right, awesome. Okay, great, so it looks like it worked. So this is my Instagram. What I was talking about before, and um, you will see it on yours, when I log in, the first thing you see on the top right is your story. That's my own Instagram story. The second thing you see is this thing that says stay at home. Now, Instagram is taking the initiative that if you put this, it's under, if you put this stay at home tag on your stories, they will pop up here. Okay, so now these are all the people that I follow that are using this little stay at home tag. Okay, so they're showing what they're doing staying at home. But you can see as I scroll through, the first thing that I see are people who are sharing Instagram stories. Here's Mike, so I'm gonna pull up Mike because we've been talking about him. You can't see the whole screen of my phone, partial screen. Huh, all right, let me try this again. Partial screen, only half my screen. Let me try this in, I'm gonna unplug the phone and plug it back in. All right, guys, so now you probably just see me. I'm gonna escape the screen. We're gonna share one more time. All right, I tried again. Do you guys see my whole phone screen right now? Let me know if you can still, if you can see the whole phone screen. Hopefully that worked. Let me open up the chat again. Yes, okay. So you guys can see the whole phone screen. All right, I'm gonna leave it on here. It looks like when I switched screens to my second monitor, you weren't able to see the entire phone screen. So I'll keep it on here. I might not be able to look at the, oh, there we go. Okay, so here's some examples of stories. So Mike just posted this, he is tagging me right now, okay? So when 
you want to feature someone who also is on Instagram, that's when you use the tag feature. So for example, uh, Mike is taking Instagram, Instagram workshop from me. He's tagging me so I can see it. If you're at a local business and they have an Instagram, you can tag them. If you, you are at a place that has a hashtag, for example, maybe you're at a conference and the conference has a hashtag, use that hashtag so that everyone who clicks on the hashtag can see everything related to that conference. I'll show you guys in the search in a little bit. I'm just going through a couple more stories. Um, here's another one that Mike is doing and he tagged me. Uh, let's see if there's anyone else on here. This is, I'm trying to find some real estate people. Uh, Ryan Lipsy, this is someone that is in the real estate industry. Uh, as you can see, he is here. He's checking in to the Ryan Lipsy team. You can actually get your own real estate company on Instagram to check in. You have to do that through Facebook, so we won't go through all the steps today. And he's also tagging some of his colleagues, it looks like. Let's see what else we got here. Um, he's on a Zoom call and he's tagging everyone in the call. So anytime you're mentioning someone else, that's when you want to use a tagging feature. That person will get notified that you tagged them and they can share your post to their feed as well. So those are a couple things. On Here's another place. Uh, when you're mentioning something for business, you can tag your colleagues. So another thing that I want to show you next is checking in. Okay. And I'll show you how to check in. Some of you guys that have never posted on Instagram stories, here's how you post an Instagram story. This top right corner where you see that camera button, do you guys all see that camera button? I just clicked on it on the top right. I'll do it one more time. You're clicking on that camera button. Okay. So you do that. And right now it's going to be a video. So I'm gonna just make this quick video right now of our session. So I'm gonna say, hey guys, I'm currently doing my webinar and I'm teaching people how to use Instagram stories while I'm creating an Instagram stories. So here's what I'm doing now and this will be posted as an example. So I now did a quick clip that I can go ahead and post later or now. I'm going to go ahead and post it later because I don't want to waste time while I'm here to post the stories. So what you can do is there is another button on top is that you don't have to post Instagram stories right away. You can take clips and videos and photos and post them later. I'm going to click this download button right here. That's next to the X. It's this, it's this arrow button. I'm going to try to go slow so you guys can see it. Click this arrow. Okay. When I click the arrow, it downloads the clip for me. It downloads the clip and then I can go back later and I can post that on my stories. Now you're probably wondering, how do I go back later and post that on my story? So I'll show you once this downloads. And don't mind my messy desk here, you guys. I have tons of stuff on my desk. I should have cleaned it before I did this session. So I'm gonna now click the X. I already have it downloaded. And now I'm back to this blank screen where I can do Instagram stories. And let me do something else. I'm going to go ahead and you guys can't see it, but I'm going to do a quick Instagram stories where I see all the participants in the room and uh, I will post it later. If I can get to that. Oh, it's not showing me the videos as I have the other video screen on. So let's see, click on the participants. All right. Not letting me do it because I have the other screen on, but that's okay. If you guys, if anyone here is able to take a screenshot of all the participants, feel free to send it to me. I want to go ahead and send it out later and tag you guys. So make sure to do that. So here I'm on Instagram stories and it looks like this kind of inception thing right now. If I don't want to post a video and create a new video and I want to just share something that's already on my phone, I click on the bottom right corner right here, the bottom right corner. Do you guys see that? The bottom right corner. Nadine's question was she tried to tag me as a business partner and she needs approval. So don't tag me as a business partner. Just tag my name anywhere on the screen. The business partner is a completely separate feature, um, which we won't go over in this webinar. It's not too relevant here, but that's a completely separate feature. 
So on the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this square and it takes me to all the content that's on my phone that I can choose from and post. So these, this was a video session I did yesterday. Uh, my daughter has this two year old outdoor class she does, which is now indoors. So we, um, yesterday met at the two year old class and we met on the computer. So what I do is I click on that clip that I took from yesterday. And then if I want to add stuff to it, what I can do is I can click this square icon on top with a square smiley face. I can use this stay at home button that just pops up and it'll automatically go on that stay at home feed. I can click back that square smiley face again. I can tag the location. The location, I'm gonna choose San Diego because I don't wanna put my home, but anytime you tag a location or use a location, that will help your posts get more visibility. If you're doing a showing somewhere, or even if you're doing a virtual open house, tag the location of the house. Maybe it's in Poway, maybe it's in Encinitas. People search for stories by location. I'm gonna tag San Diego, and I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go ahead and now there's the at sign, and I have some friends I can tag on this post. So I know one of my friends is on this post. I can tag her, she's on there with her daughter, and I can tag her, so now she gets it too. She gets it on her feed. So you want to use these features because they help make your post more visible. So I use a stay at home tag that was already pre-created by Instagram. I use the tag to tag someone who was featured in the video. And I also checked in my location. I'm not going to post this. This is just an example to show you guys, but this is something that you can do for businesses. I'm going to discard this. If you want to feature businesses, a great thing to do is tag the business and check in at their location. Make sure you tag them and check in at their location. So that's exactly what Mike did here. He tagged a business. He's at home, so there's their location. But even if you're at home, you can still check in at the business that you purchase things from so people know where to go. So keep that in mind that by tagging and checking in, you're helping other people. And the more you can help people and be a resource, the better people will recognize and see you as that community resource for people. So let's go ahead and take some questions here because I know a lot of you have questions and I wanna be able to answer specific questions about Instagram stories. So I'm gonna go back and sharing my slide, but before I do that, is there anything else you want me to show you on the Instagram app? I know there's a lot of questions here. Type in the chat box now. What can I show you on the Instagram app specifically before we go back to the video chat? Anyone have any specific questions? I will walk through one more time just in case you're brand new to Instagram stories on how to create a stories. When you log in, you're going to just see a blank not blank, but you'll have your video camera and you can push this circle button right here. If it pushes circle button, now it's recording a video. Okay. Uh, oh, great question. How does the video work? So I'm going to record a video. After I record the video, maybe I'm doing a quick clip. Then I can click the feature on top and I can type in the location. I can tag and mention people. I can use hashtags on that video. You can also do this with photos. You don't have to necessarily do a video. Click on your photos and choose a photo that you like. This is um, not related at all. This is my daughter drinking juice. So I can go click a photo. I'm going to type in this little square up here. I'm going to say I'm staying at home. I'm going to go ahead and use the hashtag. My daughter's hashtag is baby Kaylee G. So that's her hashtag. If you want to see photos of her and I can check in at my location. I'm in San Diego. And I can also type things. Okay. So you can type things. The top right is a text box. Type in the text box. Yes. So recorded video and doing your own videos 
is this, you can do them both on Instagram stories. So um, showing an example of Instagram stories during my webinar. Instagram stories from a photo. Um, Kaylee is drinking fresh squeezed OJ. All right, so that's what's happening in the photo. Again, this was just a random photo I pulled up. So uh, not everyone cares to see some baby drinking juice, but I'm just showing you guys all the different things you can do. You can edit the text, you can change color, so I can change it to yellow, I can change it to green. I'm gonna say orange because it's orange juice. You can also change the type of text. You can change it to modern text, neon text, typewriter. Um, many different things you can do. Now this takes time to learn and it takes time to be able to master. Okay, so once you have the story, whether it's through a video or a photo, click send to. I'm gonna send it to my stories. I'm gonna add it to highlights. This is a different feature we'll do in another webinar um, for my daughter, 21 months and up. I'm gonna share it to Facebook, okay? So that's how you do the Instagram story from a photo, same thing with a video. So how do stories with a lot of different videos get made? That's a great question. <clears throat> Each story individually lasts 15 seconds. If it's more than 15 seconds, it'll chop it up for you into 15 second increments, okay? So let me show you another example. If I, you can either create and click on that circle button and it'll separate the stories for you, or you can just put a video that you already have that's more than 15 seconds and it'll automatically create it into different stories. Let me see if I have something. Oh, you know what, you guys? Um, I'm gonna go over the polls feature. I have random photos, random things on my phone. So I don't think I have a video right now, but what you can do is it find a video, actually this one that I showed earlier of my daughter's uh, outdoor class indoors, you can, that one was a little bit over 15 seconds. If it's over 15 seconds, it automatically chops it up for you. You see on the bottom here, this is the first 15 seconds, and then the next one is the second part of the video. What you can do is you can delete the second part or the first part, just click on it and click the delete, or you can have all of them. You can also create different features on individual ones. You'll have to do it for the, each individual one, and it automatically creates it for you on the bottom. And when you post it, it posts it continuously, but it separates it into these little 15 separate second increments, if that makes sense. All right, so that's how you do that. Now, a couple other features I wanna show you guys. How many of you ever use the poll feature or the questions feature? Okay, so that's a great way to interact with people. You can go ahead and click on the same thing, the square smiley face up there. I'm gonna choose poll, and I, I'm gonna say who else is working while homeschooling? Okay, so you can do that. And you can change the answers. You can say me. Um, you can type your, and say, you can say nope. You can change the answers. And when you click on that, you can move it around. You can just, all you do is use your fingers to make things bigger or smaller and move them around the screen. Now, people can go ahead and answer that question. I share a lot of things on stories that are more personal. Because I feel like people like those more, people respond to those more. When I share tons of things, like I have another workshop coming up, people are just aren't as interested in my workshops for some reason, even though they should be. Um, that's one thing you can do with polls. Now, here I'll show you guys my stories from yesterday. I did post a lot of business stories. Um, I posted about this Instagram workshop that I was doing. So this was my stories from yesterday. I tagged SDAR, who's partnering with me for this workshop. And I talked about this workshop that I'm creating that you're seeing right now. I went ahead and tagged them again and I said, message me for the link, sign up for the workshop. I also said, if you can't make it, you'll get the free replay here. So these are things I did on stories yesterday, but really I feel like I don't get as much interaction as if I post something personal, like my dog or something that's you know not as relevant. So if I go back even further, um, what you can do is if you wanna see the past stories you created, 
click on these three dots right here. I call it the hamburger, three dots on your homepage. Click on your archive. And if you have the archives turned on, it shows you all the stories you posted in the past. This was a poll that I did. Um, I asked people if they thought my daughter was gonna be jumping out of her crib soon. Um, and most people said, that, said yes, that she would be. You can take a look to see who's voting. I had 32 people vote yes, one person voted no. Um, things like this, post questions related to real estate, post things that people can relate to now. Another thing that you can post right now are home improvement projects people can do at home, okay? So ask in a question form, how many of you have home improvement projects that you wanna do? Share tips for things that people can do around their house while they're stuck at home. Maybe they can um, paint, maybe they can patch something up, maybe they can hang up some photos that they may be needing to. Post things that people can do related to home improvement of their home. That's a great thing to do right now. Another thing, I want to show you guys, and then I'll promise I'll get you all the questions, is that you can do polls. Ask people questions. If I'm going to be posting something um, here, oh, that's a regular post. Let me go back to the stories. I want to go ahead and share, let's see. Share, let me see. Um, here is a photo. This was a photo of um, a one-on-one -on -one consulting session I'm doing with a real estate company, and I can do a poll here. And on the poll, oh no, that the poll was actually what I just showed. If you mess up, drag it down. You'll see that trash can. You can delete it. I'm going to actually do questions. Questions, I can say, ask me anything about social media. Okay, you can say, ask me anything about real estate, about mortgages, and then I can post that with the question. So what I would do if you're brand new to this, play around with it to ensure that you're able to test things out, to ensure that you're able to get used to using this, I'm going to go ahead now and stop the share with the phone. I'm going to go back to the screen. I'll do a quick wrap up and I'll take any questions that you guys have. I purposely left some time at the end for questions as I know you guys have a lot of questions. So let's go ahead and go back to a different share. I'll make sure you guys can see the screen. Now, can you guys see my desktop again? Let me know if you're able to see my desktop again. Yes, perfect. All right, so back to the desktop. Let me do a quick wrap up of this. I already shared these examples already. Uh, I want to offer you guys, before I continue on a bonus course right now, a lot of people are focusing on learning. I created a course on LinkedIn Learning about creating newsletters and how you can use that for your business. It's for any business. I do use a lot of real estate examples for that, but it is a paid course. However, if you have premium, you can access it for completely free. Or if you're on this webinar, you can also get free access to it by simply sending me a message on LinkedIn. You will get a completely free access to this course. It's 30 minutes. It talks about how to create newsletters for your business and it talks about how you can really use newsletters as an additional marketing tool for your business. It's a free course that I want to offer you guys as a thank you and as a bonus. Now let's get to the questions. Type in the chat box your questions. Some of you already have done that. I will go ahead and read through them and we do have a few minutes, it ends at 11, but if you wanna stick around after, I will stay around for 10 minutes after to answer additional questions in case you didn't get your question answered. So type your questions in the chat box and I'm gonna wrap up and then I'll go through all the questions. Any questions you have, type in the chat box as I mentioned. And I mentioned before that I have a lot of people I work one-on-one -on -one with. I do this through my laser marketing sessions. If you're interested in any one-on-one -on -one help, a lot of people in here are already doing this with me. Um, we can customize something and give you a fully optimized profile. We can help you create content so you always know what to share. And we can also create a strategy for generating more leads. If you're interested in any one-on-one -on -one help to get some more 
help than what we're doing now, then feel free to check out the laser marketing sessions. It's on my website right there, marketingmelody.com slash laser. I will go ahead and type it in the chat box. I will be sending out a very special offer for everyone in this webinar. So take a look for that. But that's something if you're interested in, keep in mind that we personalize it and it's custom to what you need help with the most, including Instagram stories or Facebook or anything else. Feel free to check that out. And then if you guys are gonna be able to log online next week at the same exact time <clears throat> and place, next week we are going to have a webinar, another SDAR webinar on Facebook Live and how to use that for your business. The sign up link is at the bottom. And if you are not registered already, some of you guys already registered for both, if, oh, well, let me see that. I'm gonna type that with you here. I'm gonna type that link in the chat box. If you're not registered for it, you can sign up for it. And if you can't make it, still sign up anyway so you can get the free replay. Oopsies, I lost the chat box. That's the link to sign up for next week's webinar, 10 a.m., same time, same place. Make sure you sign up for it if you want to learn about Facebook Live. And that's what I have for you guys today. Again, and then I promise I'll do questions. If we're not connected, make sure you connect with me. I'm Marketing Melody. Like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram. And if you want the, the LinkedIn course for free, connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a message there, and I'll get that to you for free on LinkedIn. Here's my contact info. And now we're going to go through all the questions, as many as I can. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up. <clears throat> The question was from, okay, so a bunch of questions about how the different videos are made. I hope I answered that question before when I showed you how you can divide up the stories in 15 second increments, it's automatic. If you upload a video that's 60 seconds, they automatically divide it up into four 15 second increments. If you type and click on that circle button to record your own video, they automatically separate it into 15 second increments. So hopefully that answers your question. We had a question from John. How do you use your name tag? I'm assuming he means how do you use your own hashtag? You can just create your own hashtag and start typing it in. And then when people search for it, they will see everything that popped up in the hashtag. Now, let me try one more time. I'm gonna plug, I'm gonna, I think I'll have to plug my phone and back in to answer this question. All right, so my phone is back. Hopefully you guys see my whole phone phone right there. Go back on Instagram. On Instagram, here's where you search for hashtags. Here's where you search for things. On the very bottom, there is this magnifying glass, okay? Click on that magnifying glass, click one more time. You're gonna be on your home page. Next to the home button, there is this magnifying glass right there. I'm gonna click up, oh, I did it too fast. Magnifying glass, click on that. And this is the search. When I click search, I can search for tags. That's where you search for hashtags. I'll type in Mortgage Mike SD because we've been talking about him. And I can see that there are over 100 posts by Mortgage Mike SD. I click on that. Uh, this, let's see. So sometimes other people have your hashtag. So recent, here we go. So there's a recent post by Mortgage Mike SD. Other people might use your same hashtag. So you have to be mindful, but this person is also someone who uses Mortgage Mike SD hashtag. And it's not Mike Francisco who's on the webinar. So it looks like multiple people will have the hashtag. So that sometimes can happen. Unless I'm clicking the wrong hashtag. So here's, again, here's one by Mike Francisco. If you type in the hashtag, Let's see, Marketing Melody, this is my hashtag. I'm gonna search for it and here are posts by me. And these are a lot of business posts that I have. So you can see all my business posts that I do. So again, the search is this bottom magnifying glass on the very bottom next to the home button and click on that. You can also search places, which is why it's important to tag places. People do search for places and 
stories and posts by location. So click on the San Diego ones and here are the posts recently by San Diego. Tag San Diego. I want to be more specific, so I'm going to type in Mission Valley. So, so these are things that people search for, Mission Valley San Diego. These are people that tagged the Mission Valley hashtag. All right, so that's where you, you use the tag. Hopefully that answered the question. Next question here. Uh, Dorothy says, which square? I'm not quite sure what that means by which square. Uh, the question here from David, is there a maximum number of photos you can post? Actually, let me go back to... Also, what length of video are you able to post? Okay, so if you're talking about static posts and not posts that are on stories, the static post can be 60 seconds long for the video. If it's more than 60 seconds, you'll want to turn it into an IGTV video, which is, again, a whole separate webinar. <clears throat> but 60 seconds, if you're going to be doing a regular post. Like for example, let me find someone who had a video. I saw someone popped up earlier. This is a sponsored video, but these videos on your feed can be 60 seconds long. If you're doing a gallery of photos, this is one I just posted. We just did a little mountain getaway. Um, we were supposed to be on a cruise, but that got canceled, of course. So we went to the mountains. We post 10 photos. 10 photos in a post on Instagram, up to 10. Question here, can you select more than one video for the same story? What you can do is you can post that video in the story, and then right away, right after that, post another video in the story. So it be, it's just simultaneous, so you don't miss out on anything. So it might not be in the same exact story, but as long as you post it right after, people still see it and they see it sequentially. So that was Laura's question. And Angela says, is it okay to post business related things on your personal account? I have one account for my business and personal. I don't wanna manage two accounts. I don't have time to manage two accounts. So I just decided to put everything on one account. The reason I do this is because I know people on Instagram wanna see fun photos. They don't just wanna see photos of me giving webinars, even though I think they're really exciting, but they don't wanna see that. And people on social media want that personal connection. They're less likely to connect with you on your real estate page if they only see photos of houses, of listings and solds, but they don't see that personal connection. So I use one account for both. Again, that saves me time because I don't wanna manage two accounts, and it also allows me to personalize my brand because people really wanna work with me. They don't necessarily wanna work with just any marketing person. They wanna work with me because they can relate to me. And by using one account for both, I can kind of get people to connect with me on a different level. For example, I'll just show you some things that I've posted recently. Uh, this was again, a mountain getaway that we did with my family. This was about, this was a business post as you, and this was about, um, my LinkedIn learning course. So this is a business post. Uh, this one we did a gender reveal because we're expecting. So that's more of a personal post. And that was a, a birth announcement that we did. Uh, this was a, a tour that we took with my husband's company. So that's more personal birthday party. I went to baby shower. I went to, we go to a lot of social things. So we lately haven't been able to, so you'll see a lot of social things. This is a grand opening I went to for the Chamber of Commerce, which was kind of business related, but I turned it into personal. Um, this was a vacation that I took. This was an event that I spoke at, so this is more business related. This is an event that I'm speaking at, but I do a combination of both, um, personal and business. A baby shower went to Valentine's Day. Uh, this is another flyer of an event that I was speaking at, and this is a, a photo of me speaking at an event. Uh, this was just a throwback photo of my wedding, and this was another event photo. I really, though, when I look back at the stats, I get way more interaction on my personal post than when I'm posting another photo of me speaking somewhere. So go figure. All right, uh, next question. Can you select more than one video for this? Oh, no, I already did that one. Uh, let's see what else you guys got. Posting to Facebook through Instagram. There seems to be a crop issue. Can you do this correctly? All right, you guys, so when you post photos on your Instagram, they're automatically cropped for Instagram. So on Facebook, you'll get that same crop. If you don't want that, post the photos separately on Facebook than on Instagram. 
but posting photos on Instagram, when you crop them, the same crop will go over to Facebook, even though on Facebook you can have more space and show the whole photo. Next question, free course message through like, yes, for my free access to my LinkedIn learning course, you'll have to connect with me on LinkedIn and send me a message there that you'll want the free course and I'll reply back with the free course. When I send the recap email for this, then you will also get a link on how to do that. So if, if you missed what I said, feel free to look for the recap email. Um, David Taxer, thank you so much, David. One-on-ones are highly recommended. Yes, David is a client and we're doing some one-on-ones together. So happy to have him give that recommendation. What are good places to find content to share? All right, Kelly, so you asked us in the beginning. So you wanna think about what kind of content you wanna share. If you want to be a resource for your local community, maybe you, what area do you live in? Maybe you live in Encinitas. Then you can think about maybe once a week featuring a local business in Encinitas. So content really differs depending on who you're targeting. If you're targeting people who are seniors, you want to think about what content seniors can relate to for real estate. If you're targeting people who are veterans, think about what content will be helpful for veterans. You always want to think of your audience and then think of what content they'll need. It really varies for everyone. <coughs> now, if you're trying to think of articles to share, think about where you go to for your news and information. You can take clips and tips from that and create it into your own post. So really, it depends on your strategy. The best way to do this is to come up with a consistent strategy. That's something that I can help you with on the one-on-ones. And then we can think about where you can go actively every single week to find and create content. <coughs> Clinton, should you post in stories as well as traditional posts or is it one or the other? I do both as long as you have a strategy for both. So I try to post on my Instagram feed three times a week, and I try to post on stories every single day. I do it a lot because I'm used to it. You don't have to do it that much. Maybe you do an Instagram post once a week and stories once a week, that's fine. Keep in mind, you're not trying to do everything. But because this is something that I do for my business, I try to do a post three times a week and stories every single day. Laura says, what is IGTV? IGTV is a place where you can watch videos on Instagram. I'll show you how to get there. If you are on your home page right here, in the middle, there's this TV icon that's swig swiggly. Okay, I have my finger on it. I'm gonna click on that. And these are IGTV videos that I made. They can be up to 10 minutes. I don't have very many, but they can be up to 10 minutes on IGTV. Okay, I can click here and it goes to my IGTV posts. I can browse other IGTV videos I made. And you can also, when you go to search, click on the IGTV tab and search for other IGTV videos that people made. Um, that's a whole separate webinar. So if you guys um, find this helpful, make sure you give your feedback to SDAR saying you want additional webinars on different topics and tell them what topic you want. So that really helps me if you're able to reach out to them and tell them that you enjoy this webinar and you want to see more, tell them what else you want to learn. This one was strictly on Instagram stories. That's what they came to me and they said that, hey, we have a lot of members that want to learn about Instagram stories. Do you mind doing a webinar on that? So if you have something specific, feel free to go to them, give them your feedback. Um, Jane is a lady that I connected with. Feel free to contact her, um, send them an email, and that would really be helpful for me to be able to do these, do more of these for you guys. All right, so other questions? All right, so those were the main questions, you guys. Thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna share back my screen. I will do a quick wrap up. If you can't stay, no worries. Feel free to jump off. Look for an email from me. I will offer you a very special promotion for the laser marketing sessions. I will offer you a free access to LinkedIn Learning. I will also provide the link for next week's webinar, so make sure you sign up for that. Something that's really helpful for me is that if you share these with your contacts, share these with your network, and share these with other people who will benefit from this information. Also, what will really help me spread the word is that if you are able to uh, like 
my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and tag me on things. Feel free to write a review for me. This really helps me create more and better content for you. And it helps the organizations like SDR want to hire me and bring me in to create more valuable resources for you. So any positive feedback is always helpful. If you have anything that you want to see me improve, send that to me privately and I will make sure that I incorporate that. But if anything is positive, feel free to share that publicly so other people can see what you're doing and learning. But other than that, you guys, I really appreciate your time. Hopefully this has been really helpful. I hope to see you next week for Facebook Live and the week after that for YouTube. And I hope to see you on social media. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is Melody Tao with Marketing Melody, marketing your way to success. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, you guys that are still on quickly. I want to take a, take a photo of you guys. If you guys have video off, let me just pause the recording, turn the video on. I'm going to take a photo of everyone here.